here's the scenario. Emergency preparedness, you're out camping, you've got your little HT with you, you need to make a contact, you're at a campground, there's no service, what are you gonna do? The little HT just won't make the connection back to wherever it is that you need to go to. I'm gonna try this HT connecting to a repeater 30 miles away. So in this test, I'm gonna go through four different antennas to see what makes a difference, to show you a practical example of what you can do to improve your communication skills when you're out camping. I'm using one of my Yesu handhelds. This is the Yesu FT65. Simple little radio, it's gonna be five watts. Hoping that we're gonna reach somebody, I'm hoping that there's someone on this repeater for us to contact when we get there. The repeater frequency that I'm using today is 146.76. The four antennas that I'm using are two rubber duck antennas, the two small vertical antennas, the little six inch that might come with your original HT, and then what's called a signal stick. There's a local guy that makes these, they're like 19 inches long. It's a little flexible antenna. And the other two antennas are gonna be Yagi. One's gonna be a homebrew antenna that I put together a few years back. And then I'm also gonna be using the actual arrow antenna hooked up to the HT. So I'm gonna be using all four antennas with this HT to give an accurate comparison for making the contact. K7SW. K7 Sierra Whiskey. All right, trying the small antenna, I've got nothing. I got no signal back from the repeater, no acknowledgement, so I'm pretty sure they're not gonna be hearing me. Now this next test is going to be the 19 inch whip, the little uh, vertical. I'll mention something about this antenna that I really like. It's the kind where you can actually fold this up and tie it in a knot and um, store it. It's really handy, it doesn't break. I've had this for many years and it hasn't broken. It's super durable. The only downside that I'll say about this antenna is when it gets cold outside, this antenna just kind of limps down. It's the weirdest thing. It's the material that it's made out of. All over sickness, Jack. You just fixed me some lunch now. I'm not sure if they heard me or they heard someone else. Since I can't hear the repeater, it's hard to really tell. I guess I'm part of the antenna now, aren't I? Okay, so now I'm using this homebrew Yagi antenna. I'm gonna see if I can make the same, at least the same progress making a contact. See your whiskey? Sierra Whiskey? Yeah, that's the one. Sierra Whiskey? Sierra Whiskey? I catch you lot. Sierra Whiskey? Well? Sierra Whiskey? Sierra Whiskey? Yeah, I'm still here. Sierra Whiskey? It's awfully tough to get a break you in this conversation. So let's stop and we'll come back to this. K7 Sierra Whiskey, anybody copy? K7SW, K7PB. Sure is good to hear you, man. How bad is it? Okay, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. This is where it was good originally. How about this? Uh, back to you. Much better. And keep the up. It sounds bad coming back to me, but if you're hearing me better, I guess that's okay. Uh, HT with my little homebrew Yagi over. Uh, it's working. Very good. Well, if you have a sec, you mind if I grab a, grab a different antenna? Go ahead. All right, so that was a good test. Uh, we just had to move as you can see, like 15 feet away. Let's move all the gear back here and do some more. Okay, so that was the first test with the homebrew Yagi antenna. Now I'm gonna try the arrow antenna. Let's see if that's better than this one. All right, I changed direction. Is that any better or worse? The Yagi is much better, but you're better now than you were a second ago. Okay, instead of aiming towards Lake Mountain, I'm aiming towards St. George, and it's uh, reflecting off those, probably off Nebo now. Yeah, that canyon runs the wrong direction. <laughs> See, there you go. So there's a perfect example of experimentation and aiming your antenna around um, to where it needs to be. So my test has been with two, ye two little Yesu radios. Get your radio closer to your face and try that again. B, is that any better? Yeah, it's much better. If, in the, if your nose is touching your radio, your audio level gets way high. Well, good. Well, thanks for helping me do this test. Yeah, well, you're not full quality by any means. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite steamy, but if you get your audio level up, it's easy. Understand you. I have one more antenna to try if you can tolerate it. Sure, I love testing antennas. All right, so now I'm going to go back to the 19-inch um, signal stick. This probably isn't going to do very good for us. K7SW, K7SW. K7SW, K7SW. All right, you can clearly see that this antenna is just not going to cut it, even though it's the bigger antenna of the little whip antennas. And now if I was up higher on the mountaintop, this is a no-brainer. 
we would get in and we wouldn't have to set up all this other gear. Okay, uh, that intent didn't work, so I'm back to the uh, one that did. Okay, well, definitely this one does. Um, you backed away from the mic again. I changed radios. This time I'm using the FT-65, even though my face is touching the, uh, the radio. Yeah, two things. One is, have you got it set for wide, uh, wide band uh, deviation? Instead of narrow. I just checked and this radio is set for wide. Utah is, uses wide. In, uh, in some uh, places in California, they knew, use narrow. If you, got, uh, if you have to go to closed channel spacing, you have to switch it to narrow. But in Utah, we're set for 20 uh, kilohertz, so uh, uh, we use wide and it uh, makes it a lot easier. Because of that, I switched back to the uh, FT60. And this is where you were saying the audio was better than uh, the last radio. Yeah, it's a little bit louder, a little bit more audio. So it, the noise is still the same, but your audio is a little bit louder and uh, a bit easier to, uh, to copy. The other one has a nicer sound. Uh, this one has uh, got, well, it sounds like you're talking really close, which you are. But that makes it so you get through the noise. But uh, the other one has higher quality audio, but with the noise in the background, uh, this one is easier to listen to. Okay, very good. Well, and for the purposes of uh, emergency, if I needed to make a contact, either radio would probably work in this case. Yeah, it's copyable to that degree. Is that fair to say? That is correct. Oh, fantastic. Appreciate you doing that. This is a really big help to know that at least it's getting out. And as a good reminder to get my face to that microphone, it was cold, so I just kept pulling away. And in all the excitement, that's kind of what happens. So uh, I appreciate the feedback. Okay, Kevin, have a good day and don't freeze. Seven three, and uh, thanks again for the help. I really appreciate it. K7SW. I wanna thank K7PB for helping me make this video to show you guys how important it is to do a few things when you're out using your handheld radio and you need to make an urgent radio connection. Having a bigger antenna is always better. Yagi is certainly a fantastic opportunity to make a contact. Having your face that close to a microphone is important for making that contact. My signal was so steamy that I was barely making that connection to that repeater. And luckily for me, the guy on the other end, K7PB, was there to give me real feedback and let me know what to do to improve my signal. Because it's so cold, I'm excited. There's stuff that's going on around here. I had my microphone at least half an inch away. That doesn't seem like it's very far, but it made that big of a difference. And also, when you have an antenna, when you're using a Yagi antenna like I was doing, I aimed at a different location. So I aimed my antenna directly to where the repeater should be. And of course, the signal was okay, but it wasn't good. But since I know from being here before and experimenting like I always do when I'm out, I aim that antenna in all directions until I found the spot where the signal will reflect back into the valley to where this repeater is. In my case, I was aiming 90 degrees away from where the repeater was, and that's not uncommon, so that might be something that could be valuable for you in the future. So that's gonna be the end of this test. I hope you got something from that. I hope that was useful for you. The other step that I didn't cover in this video is you could move 10 feet in one direction and make your signal be perfect. It's amazing how that is. So never be satisfied with standing in one position and trying to make the contact to a repeater or over simplex to some remote location. You never know what's gonna be in the way. Moving around can often improve your signal. So these are my tips for this video. Make sure your mic is close to your mouth. Make sure your antenna is aimed in the right direction if you're using a Yagi and always use a big antenna wherever you can. And of course, climbing higher if you're in a uh, emergency situation or you're in a remote location, higher is always better. If you got something from this video, click that like button down below. It does help the video. It does help the channel and YouTube promotes these videos to make it easier for people like you to see. If you're new here, consider subscribing to get more videos like this. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.